Today I want to talk about carbon credits on the blockchain. Uh, because, you know, there are at least like half a dozen little startups that are basically trying to do this right now. For the record, I actually did purchase Bitcoin for the first time in 2012. And like many people who were in the space back then, if I had just held on to this Bitcoin, I probably wouldn't be making videos right now. Uh, <laughs> So increasingly, people are, are basically tying carbon credits back to, you know, back to a blockchain in some way. Uh, I've seen a couple of different ways that people are trying to do this. Let me start with the positive. Uh, right now, it is impossible for someone like me to just invest in carbon credits. There's no way that I can just buy carbon credits, sit on them, and then resell them. And that's ridiculous, right? Like, you know, if there's anyone who knows which carbon credits are good and bad, it's me. I should be making millions of dollars on insider trading right now. <laughs> but anyway, blockchains offer a good solution there because you can actually trade carbon credits fairly easily and you don't actually have to retire them unless you want to. So this is the only solution that I've seen out there right now to actually allow, you know, individuals like myself to actually buy and sit on carbon credits. Well, that being said, <laughs> I have a couple of big problems with how carbon credits are being implemented on, on blockchains. I think that my first and, and biggest is that, as we all know from watching my videos, not all carbon credits are equal. And yet, one Bitcoin tends to be equal to another Bitcoin. And so the fundamental assumption of most of these blockchain systems is that the assets are the same. And the market knows this as well too, right? Because carbon credits can sell for upwards of five times the amount, depending on what project they're coming from, right? If it's from a really crappy old project they're maybe only selling for like five dollars a ton if it's from a top of the line uh reforestation effort in you know native rainforest it's probably selling for 35 dollars a ton at least so there's this difference between the value of carbon credits never mind the fact that half of these carbon credits are from bad projects and most of the blockchain implementations that i've seen don't take this difference into account and you know one of the things that i've seen that these, that these startups doing is they're just buying credits up from any old source they don't care where and throwing them on the blockchain so that it can be like traded around. You know, obviously this doesn't work if the credits are not worth the same amount. I mean, I guess they could all sell for the average, but who's to say whether or not you're supporting a good project or a bad project? Uh, so this is kind of ironic, right? Because the blockchain people will tell you that they're like introducing traceability and like and, and transparency here, uh, but there's nothing traceable or transparent about not knowing whether or not your credit came from a crap project or a great project. Now, the only way around this that I say is you could use like a second layer solution, like you can make NFTs for like every carbon credit. Now, I, I, I don't know about you guys, but my NFTs, they sell for about three bucks, but it costs a hell of a lot more than that in gas fees to actually create them. I don't know, maybe this is a problem for the engineers, but as it's implemented right now, I would not trust any blockchain solution that claims that all carbon credits are equal, because we all know that's not the case. But, you know, even my, my even bigger problem with these blockchain implementations is that I don't think they're really solving for much. I've never really encountered somebody who said, I don't know where my carbon credits came from. You know, there are already registry bodies that keep track of where all the carbon credits are, right? You know, it's like Vera and American Carbon Registry, and they suck, right? It's probably somewhere, probably in like the massive Los Angeles skyscraper that Vera has. Somewhere in the sub-basement, there's probably an intern managing like Excel files. But you know what? I really don't care. Right, the system kind of works. The system that we have for tracking credits, I mean, it kind of works already, right? But the problems with carbon credits, like all the stuff that I rail about in these videos, they all occur upstream of the actual issuance. So I don't see how tracking carbon credits on a blockchain is gonna tell me whether or not those trees were actually at risk or whether or not those trees were cut down two years ago and this just hasn't been reported to Vera yet. We've got all these problems, but just adding another layer to credits that may be good or may be bad isn't, isn't solving anything for anybody. Now, some of the more sophisticated blockchain people that I've seen are actually trying to tie, you know, carbon credits on a blockchain back to performance that's being measured by some sort of remote sensing sensor. Conceptually, this isn't such a bad idea. You know, I could even be swayed into like, you know, thinking that this could work. I, I do want to mention one problem here, and that it's in my career, I have already tried to tie carbon credits back to a very specific geolocation, right? We all want to be able to point to a tree and say, this is where credit number 0001 came from. Uh, but nature isn't that, that simple, right? And so on average in a natural forest, one to 2% of trees die every year. And this is not something to be worried about. You know, trees get old, they blow over. This is just life, right? 
Uh, and so if you're actually tracing carbon credits back to a single tree, uh, you're going to have this issue where your tree dies and your credit is invalidated, and then somehow the blockchain has to like make up for that by finding another credit. It gets back to a bigger issue in, in that the smaller the area that you're looking at, the higher the chance of some sort of reversal, some sort of catastrophic event, right? And so even if we trace back the credits to like a 30 meter area or even a hectare, the chances of you know some sort of wind throw event striking that 30 meter area they're fairly high. You know, we're, we're talking like 1% or something per year. The chances of th that event occurring to a large area, to a whole project, pretty much null, right? Because there's always like, there's a constant replenishment. So th this is the problem that I came across, is, is that if you actually do trace carbon credits back to like very small areas, then you have to have some sort of very sophisticated insurance or replacement system in place for when nature takes its course. Anyway, that's, that's not to say that it couldn't work. But, you know, the solution usually ends up being just look at larger areas. Take the area average and, and issue your credits there. And if you're doing that, you're basically just tracing carbon credits back to projects. And we haven't really made much progress then, right? Because that's where we are right now. You know, ultimately, I think that a lot of the people in this space, you know, they're crypto experts or they're engineers and they really want to do something for the world. Uh, but they're not biological experts and they don't actually know what's going on with, like, how to preserve the forest. Uh, and so they're, you know, they're applying this, the kind of solution that they know, which is great. But does it really move the needle? I'm not convinced yet. I haven't seen the project that's really swayed me. So that's my feeling on crypto in the carbon space.